Collins was one of the three members of the successful Apollo 11 mission to the moon in 1969. But unlike Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, Collins never walked on the moon. Alex Irvine is a writer in Maine and wanted to share the story of Collins, the lesser known crew member. He released The Far Side of the Moon in 2016, in which he shares a number of interesting moments in Collins' life, including a surgery on his neck that made him miss the Apollo 8 mission and set him on course to pilot Apollo 11. <laughs> humanized him in a way because, uh, you know, we, we tend to think of astronauts as like superheroes. But uh, another thing that I learned, I was never able to confirm this story, but I really want it to be true, so I'm going to act like it is. And uh, that is apparently Armstrong was having real trouble figuring out what he was going to say when he stepped out onto the moon after he and Aldrin had argued about who was going to go first. Um, and Collins dared him uh, to uh, to walk out of the uh, of the lunar module and say, "Oh my God, what's that?" and cut off his mic. <laughs> <laughs> so even while they're you know these are three guys who with the courage to strap themselves on top of basically a bomb carrying three million gallons of rocket fuel, um, and maybe I think that number is right. Um, it's a lot anyway. Maybe it's a million gallons and go. 250,000 miles through space to the moon and then he's just going to drop two of them off and they're going to go down and they're going to come back up and they all made it work. It's uh, it's 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 kind of the greatest feat of engineering in human history. And then behind it, there's these stories about their, you know, joking about who's going to say what when they get up. Well, and obviously the three of them were were a pack, but you talk about how Collins was the guy who stayed and orbited the moon. And there were times, every time he went to the far side of the moon, he lost connection with everyone. And so it was yeah. so, you, and you write about how isolating that must have been. Yeah, I, I, can you imagine it? There's a, there's a famous picture from the Apollo 11 mission right after the lander has separated from the, from the command module. And um, in that picture are Armstrong and Aldrin and planet Earth. So every human being who has ever lived is in that picture except Michael Collins. And it's an astonishing thing to think about. And then he went and he orbited the moon 30 times. And every time he went behind uh, the, the far side of the moon, yeah, he was out of radio contact for 48 minutes. And um, what an astonishing thing to think that, uh, that you know, nobody, nobody has ever done that before. And then also to constantly know that, you know, at the end of this is your real role in the mission because he had to pick these guys up and make sure they got home. And, uh, and so that was the thing that he said really um, both plagued him kind of and kept him, kept him on point. You did, you did write about that, and I, that mm -hmm. stood out to me too, the fact that he had spent six months staying up at night, one, worrying about leaving the two of them on the moon mm -hmm. in, in case they couldn't get back up. He, uh, th he hints that he kind of considered suicide in that case, but then, uh, but then he decided not to. He writes about this in Carrying the Fire about what he would do if the ascent module's engine didn't fire or if he screwed up the docking or any of the literally thousands of things that could have gone wrong. Um, and uh, he decided that he was just going to live with it, but it was his, his worst fear. Do you think he lived the life he wanted to? I know that was his last mission with NASA. He was the first director of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum and got that built, which if you've ever been there, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, and he worked in government for a while, aerospace consulting. He lived the life he wanted to live. Again, astronaut Michael Collins died this week at the age of 90.